Today, we're gonna go help a friend. Uh, I've got a friend with a Yanmar engine, and if you've watched my other videos, you know that I always say, Yanmar make really good engines. Their parts are a little expensive, but they make really good engines, but they don't make very reliable starters. So if you go out to sea, carry a spare starter. Today, we're gonna go to a friend's boat. One of his engines won't start because the starter has issues. We're gonna tear the starter part, figure out how to get one working out at sea. They're really not very complicated. This is something you can do yourself. Today we're going to do a little boat project. Uh, I want to introduce you to Steve. This is Steve. Uh, he and his wife Janet uh, came down sort of the same time we did to the Dominican Republic and had to deal with all that horrible condition that we had to go through. If you guys have been watching, you've seen Emily's song, uh, The Boat Won't Tip Over. Well, it's the story of three of us getting here. Uh, we had all kinds of problems, tore a mainsail, all kinds of things. Another guy uh, lost his mizzen mast, fell right down at sea. And Steve probably had the worst problems. He uh, lost one of his engines and the other one wasn't running right and he lost his forestay and he couldn't sail. Well, we're putting everything back together. And today we're right to the point where the engine should start, except the starter can't turn it over. We'll show you what's going on first and then we'll take the starter off the motor, we'll tear it down and uh, figure out why it's not running right. Fix the starter, put it back together, put it back on the engine and hopefully the engine will start right up and everybody will be happy. And this will be a very useful thing. Even if you don't have a Yanmar, all starters are basically the same in size. So at the end of this video, you'll be an expert at tearing down a starter. And if it doesn't start when it finishes, you'll never see this video. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Conrad is, uh, oh, Conrad can do all kinds of stuff. He's a welder. He's, he's an amazing guy. He's the guy that welded our radar arch back together. And he's volunteered to dive down and actually take the starter off and put the other one on so I can sit out here and stay clean. Because <laughs> I don't want to have to go out and bring him back in like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like we did on that one. Yeah. That's right. Conrad uh, went out and uh, um, helped them get back in. Hey. <laughs> hey. My boat in that song is the one that should have almost tipped over. <laughs> so, and it's the widest. <laughs> yeah, it's Let me say something in here. Uh -huh. One of the best things about cruising full-time and cruisers is what we're doing right now. We share knowledge and we help each other. And that's one of the main reasons Janet and I got into cruising 35 years ago. The people have different talents. I don't have any talents, but I find <laughs> other people that do. And what happens is they help each other. And I, I really appreciate that. I think it's you, maybe it's not unique, but it's part of the cruising community. Right? Mm -hmm. That's I, right. yeah, it's a great community. Uh, well, let's start out by trying to start the engine. Let's Let me get the key. The first starter that was on there wouldn't turn over at all. But Steve had a spare. And he put <laughs> spare on. And now it sort of turns over, but it only turns over at about half the speed it should turn over. And that's just not enough to get this engine to start. Okay, here we go. It's not turning over and starting the engine. But the, uh, Do you remember what I remember is that slow compared to this one? I just don't want to... Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but you, if you agree that it's cranking at half speed, I'm sure it's, it's cranking at half it speed. It sounds like it's cranking slow to me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you want to describe the problem and the, okay. what you think the solution is? Well, I don't know yet. Um, okay. I know the starter's not spinning fast enough. So we'll take it apart and look, and we'll worry about it once we get it apart. It's probably the commutator's all gummed up with carbon, but we'll figure that out. But the next step is Conrad's going to dive down and remove the old starter from the engine. Well, first thing I'm going to do is take the power off of the solenoid. Uh, there's a hot line that comes from the battery, and we've shut it off here so it won't arc to things when I take it off. and it goes up against the engine block and would tend to want to fry things if we, if we didn't shut it off. So um, there's also the line from the alternator and it appears that there's another little line from the 
uh, to the yeah power to the wiring harness, the rest of the engine, probably little gauges and it, who knows what else. So that's off of there. There's a little ground that comes off of the back of the solenoid tour. I don't even I'm not even sure what it is. It's a the, what is that one, Clark? The little one on the slide that goes to the opposite side of the starter of the of, on the starter. The yeah. little I mean the the little yeah. one that that's it's what actually. Itself. Uh, that's the oh, that jumps button. over. Yeah, power from the key. Yes, mm -hmm. to activate this. That says go. Solenoid. <laughs> that says go. There we are. Now we just have to pull two bolts, and it should come right out. Maybe. So the top bolt here is a little hard to get to. Can't really get it with your fingers, but the extension works. Mm. Sorry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Please don't end up in the bilge. There it is. Yay. Now, Steve, I remember at one point you mentioned that you might have tried to start it with uh, by jumping yeah. across between them. Was it yeah. this one? Yeah. Just it came to me the other night, and I was wondering if could have tried perhaps it might have grounded to the to the engine, or you know, to it, not right to the okay. get right across. Don't know, but don't know. That's why you're down there instead of me. Because I really don't have the mechanical knowledge of either. That's why Clark is here to take it apart and tell us what's wrong with it. That's oh, a three man operation. Right? So you got the brain, <laughs> you have the brawn, and you have the dummy. <laughs> He's got the wallet. <laughs> he buys the parts. <laughs> there it is. That is. Now, well, let's take a look on the inside yeah. and, uh, and see how it all works. All right, <laughs> this is a starter. This one looks pretty darn new, actually. It is. Um, okay, well, that's a good thing in a starter, except the not spinning part. Um, so what a starter is, is two parts. This is an electric motor, and this motor in this particular starter has planetary gears here, because it spins real fast, and that slows it down and ups the torque a lot. And it's got this little gear and the gear, when you start the starter, I'll get into it how in a minute, jumps forward and engages with a great big gear on the flywheel. And it just spins the engine around, just like if you were to grab a hold of it with a big wrench and pull on it. Now how that gets pushed forward and how the whole thing gets going is this. This is called the solenoid. And a solenoid, if you know what a relay is, same thing but bigger. There's an electromagnet in here, and when it gets power, it pulls a plunger hard against two contacts and that plunger also pulls on a lever that shoots this forward. When the contacts get made, power, which is coming from here from the battery all the time, gets jumped to this pole, which goes right into the motor and makes it spin. Now starters are not continuous duty motors. They can spin and they can make a huge amount of power, but what they sacrifice is if you try to run this for a long time, it will just burn out. And a long time is not that long. So if you're trying to start your engine, crank it for, you know, 10 seconds would be a long time. If it doesn't start in 10 seconds, you better think, why is this not starting? Don't just keep asking the starter for more. If you do need to use more, of course, just let it cool for a while, then take another shot at it. Or call Clark. <laughs> okay, let's see what's inside. How a starter is held together is that these two bolts, all motors tend to be like this. These two long bolts, they go all the way up here and they thread into this casting on this end. And you take them out, um, you take off this plate and this holds the brushes. You'll see that in a minute. And then we get to see the magic of what's inside. If you're taking one apart, don't take these screws off yet. You might have to later, but they take the what's called the brush holder off. 
and if you take them off before you take the other part apart, well, things go all around inside and something might get broken. I should have torn this down first so it looked like it was easy. Faked it. I don't fix things. <laughs> yeah, that one video on the four stroke carburetor. It, the hard part was taking it apart. The fix was probably would have been a 10 minute video, but it went on for a long time. Yeah, but this is what happens on boats. Yeah. yeah. The real world. Yes. You pretty much say, okay, this is a 10 minute job. No problem. <laughs> I got this under control. Two hours later. Two days later. <laughs> yeah, two days later. You still learn it. That's what happens on the boats constantly, so we shouldn't be surprised. So, anybody thinking about going out and cruising into the sunset, have patience or friends who know a lot. All right. All right. So, what we have here is just your basic electric motor. And then on this side, we have planetary gears. And would you look at that? The outer race bearing, or the outer race gear of this planetary set is plastic. Um, well, it's not worn away, it's not our problem, but it shocks me that they would make that out of probably glass reinforced nylon. I really don't know. I'm not AVE, I can't smell plastic and know what it is. But, uh, it's a little shocking. Anyway, this all moves nicely, so I'm going to assume this part's okay. We're going to look into this motor. Hey, now we got the motor to take apart. This one is different. What I said about these screws is not true. They're holding the motor together. I need a smaller Phillips. I guess I'll have to move. Oh, you got one there? I, think I need to have the leverage. There we go. Great tool there, Conrad. Oh, squirrely. No, yeah. Squirrely. <laughs> All right. It's starting to rain a little bit. I hope. Uh, if this you know, doesn't go, I hope that other starter that I brought is the same because it doesn't come apart the same as this. But it's close. Probably all it has to be the same bolt pattern, the same voltage, and it'll work fine. I hope so because otherwise people will never see this video. <laughs> that's be the first time that happened. <laughs> that's what we thought all about the four stroke video until the end and then we got it running. Jeez, it's grease all over my fingers. All right. Now the problem with taking these apart, putting them back together, is pain in the ass. Oh, this, don't say ass. Okay, this feels terrible. I can't even turn it. Oh, this feels terrible. This is good news. Yeah. That's our problem right here. Okay. It's not good that it feels terrible, but it's. It's telling. All right. Let's see if we can get this apart. But it is not turning well. It's. Really, really hard to turn. Probably all it has to be the same bolt pattern. Same bolt. There we go. All right, let's take it apart. I can get that out. That's easier. Yes, yes, yes. All right, this is the magnet side. Those are all the magnets, the permanent magnets. And when the engines, when the motor here is spinning, those brushes in there put electricity through these, and these make strong magnetic fields that want to line up with those really, really bad, and they move. And how that all gets timed is with, actually, let me put those screws back in. Do I have the screws in? No, I'll take the brush holder out. It'll be easier to put it back together. Yes, 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 yes. All right. This assembly here is called the brush holder, and um, on these electric starters, I find this to be the like the most problematic part. And what it does is holds brushes. <laughs> I take it apart a little more, and it's going to go click. There we go. 
did go click. <laughs> now these brushes, you can see that there's uh, wires here that come down. This is the same wire. This is the hot wire, and it goes to these two brushes. These two brushes hook to the, the holder itself, which hooks to the starter, which hooks to the engine, which gives negative power, the negative side of the battery. These springs here push it forward, so it connects with this thing. This is called the commutator. And the commutator hooks to all these different uh, electromagnets. It's pretty simple, actually. So when um, it's in a certain place, you get a strong electromagnet in a way that doesn't line up with these permanent magnets, and the starter tries to turn. And as soon as it turns a little bit, this commutator is like switches, and it switches to the next magnet. And it's like it keeps trying to line up, and it keeps failing, and that forces it to spin around and around. Okay. So when you take one of these apart, you want to look at this commutator. Now look at there. If you can see between these little pins, see all that crud in there? That's carbon. It came out of the brushes. And it gets in there, and it's conductive. And when it conducts across, it um, uh, wastes the power going right across. Also, see all this dirt? This should be kind of shiny. So we're going to clean this up so it makes better contact. So, Steve, yes. can you get me some fine sandpaper? Very fine. Okay. How much do you want? Just one sheet, and I won't use much of it. OK, so I've cleaned this now with a rag. And you can see it already looks a lot better. Now I'm going to very gently polish this up with some fine sandpaper. Ooh. It's soft copper, so it doesn't take much to polish it. And then I'm going to need, oh, I got a knife in my pocket. I'll use that. There we go. See how nice and pretty that is? I've got some scratches in it, but a lot of those were there from the brushes. But I didn't go too far. Now what I want to do is clean out between the, the little puddles. <laughs> I've got a toothbrush right in here. I like my little knife for this. And all I do is clean down between them. There's a nice space here. It's not a problem. Some motors, you really have to go at it. And I've had a motor where I could only really get it right if I took a hacksaw blade and I broke it off and I hammered it flat so it didn't have a kerf to it. So I made myself like just the narrowest file in the world. And then I use that to clean out these little, little places. But you don't want anything in there short-circuiting these commutators. Commutator is such a funny word. <laughs> I always think communist dictator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Damn, commutator! I guess the whole thing is the commutator, and these would be pedals. I don't know what the word is for one little copper dealy. We'll look it up and put it on the screen. <laughs> yeah. <Ding. laughs> yeah, all you guys, you're lucky Emily's around. You'll always get the right word for things. And you may not pronounce it right, though. I'll be used to calling them. I'm, I'm happy just calling them whatever, as long as it works. As long as, I, as long as I can make it work. So that was dirty? Yeah, there's there's some carbon in here. And there's, there's another problem, too. Like this one, you see how that really bad that one is? So that's hurting us a little bit, and the fact that it was all black and not very shiny metal was hurting us a little bit. But mostly, that should have spun right around in my fingers, and it didn't. Mm -hmm. So we've got something in the magnets. Some piece of metal came loose, and we'll get that cleaned out. And Which all of those things. Because I just had this rebuilt. Well, well to what extent? Yeah, Steve hired someone to rebuild it. Pesos. Yeah. <laughs> to what extent? That's pretty cheap. <laughs> well, it isn't cheap when you... Okay, you'll be, fi you'll be yeah. fine, senor. Then you go out to see it. It doesn't start. It doesn't work. Yeah. That is expensive. Okay. I'll take a little look at this. To show you this thing, if you see these little divots cut into it, that means they uh, balanced this. They put it on a high-speed thing and spun it, and it was a little heavier on this side than that side, so they just ground out a little bit of this soft iron and uh, did it again until they got it uh, right. So, oh, there and here. It was wobbly. Had a wobble, yeah. 
for a starter, <laughs> you know, it's a good idea and they should do it, but put in real gears <laughs> and let it wobble. It doesn't run that much. It's not going to hurt itself. The, the bearings don't fail in these. The gears do. All right, that looks good. Now let's take a look at this. Well, I didn't, oh, it's rust. The whole thing is just full of rusty, yeah. crappy badness. Yeah. Yeah, please. Could you maybe get some WD-40? Do you have any? Or spray oil? Or some yeah, light yeah. Oil? It's right it's where all the parts are. So the problem was, the commutator was dirty. Um, got that. But the biggest problem was, if you look in here, this, is, this has to be steel or iron uh, containing because these magnets, you see how strong the magnet is in here and how weak it is out here. It's because this carries the flux over to this one. So this would be a north pole, likely. I might be exactly backwards, it doesn't matter. And then this is a south, and this is a north, and this is a south. So this has to be steel out here. And steel in a marine environment, you know, has issues. This one, very obviously, had some salt water right up inside it for a goodly amount of time without being cleaned out. And it scraped away most of the corroded bumps that built up the rust. There's a bad one here. And I'll clean it up and we'll put some lube on it. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, now it's, I'm getting hacked for that. I don't sits, know where mine lives. It sits right by the, in the catch-all, you know, because <laughs> I use it so much. Go yeah. on. Go on up. Uh, how can I? Okay, so I've been looking inside here, Steve. Yeah. Here's what's happened. Wherever you stored this, um, it was this side down. Okay. <laughs> and salt water's been in there. Oh. And this thing's been flooded in salt water for quite some time. Now, you're, um, the last guy to go in here didn't bother to clean it. Okay. And there uh, was all kinds of big corrosion right. pieces here. And I've cleaned them up pretty good. I'm going to use the lube now to clean it a little solvent, to clean it brush? better. No, it's too soft. I don't want to hurt the, the magnets. Okay. I'm just going to use paper towels in my hands. I use the screwdriver, which is hard, but I can do it carefully like a scraper. Okay. But I, I think I got it pretty good. All those pieces of whatever were just jamming in. To that. That's why I couldn't turn it by hand. And it's, so the starter's job was to start the engine and, oh, um, and tear yourself start, apart. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and not. that's why it was going slow. I, th I think it's a contributing factor. Either yeah. down or the other. So I'll just clean it out real good. I like the smell of <laughs> I, was, I was just thinking the same thing. It smells like victory. It smells like being being fixed. You know, I was joking about all the waxes and I wouldn't want to clean with the wax, but this doesn't get that hot. What do you think about me waxing with some of his fancy spray waxes to keep that corrosion from happening anymore? Give it a try. Yeah, it's, and I mean, it, it worst is the wax will burn off. Yeah, it won't get, it won't, it won't get in the way. Yeah. yeah. So in, in, what you're saying is all the stuff you made fun of now isn't so bad. Well, it wouldn't have good done for cleaning, but it's it, it good for preserving. I like the bow shield. Get the bow shield. We have to keep counting how many times we have to stop. Bow shield, come here, bow shield. And then we'll put a link to the bow shield down there and we'll I sell some it. bow shield. Yeah, they're two of them. Oh, okay. And then people say, you can't do that. Why are you doing that? The next one over. As a marine to the mechanic, left. I advise yeah. you. Oh my God. Different. Someone just wrote on my two Get stroke fix. If you can see it. Video. He's a marine engineer. Oh, okay. a marine engineer. Marine engineer. He fixes outboard motors, so that makes him a marine engineer. Because we know that engineers are who fixes things, not who develops them. <laughs> and he goes on about how I just got lucky. And I really, you know, if I was a professional and not an amateur idiot, I think he actually uses those words, um, I would have started at the fuel tank and, you know, looked all the way up to find. But I got lucky and I just found it. Or maybe I listened to the engine and the symptoms and I just knew immediately what the problem was and fixed it. But, you know, what do I know? Because I'm not a marine engineer, apparently. Alright, so. This is Bow Shield. Uh, 
Steve's a big fan of this. I got some on board too. I like this stuff too. What this is, I'll take a minute to talk about lubes because I'm using various lotions and potions here. This is grease. Uh, grease is a mixture of oil and soap. And it's thick and it stays where you put it. And also, you can squeeze it harder without it squishing out from between the two surfaces. So it can handle harder loads. And you put it on gears and you put it on bearings that are under big loads. Then we've got oil. And light oil, you should use light oil a lot. People don't use it enough. I don't have any here. It, it doesn't enter into this job. But light oils, like what you would use in a sewing machine, um, are really oil. And they're slippery and they make things slide over each other. Like engine oil is a lighter oil. This is WD-40. Now, everybody uses this as oil. This is not oil. This is a solvent and it's actually a... Uh, uh, it, it forms a coat on things and keeps... Uh, it stays there. It, it'll stop corrosion. But it's mostly solvent. So if you had something that was squeaking because it needed oil and you spray WD-40 on it, it washes away all the oil, leaves a little bit of very, very incredibly light oil behind it, and then uh, three days later the thing has no oil and it really goes bad. And let me tell you the history of WD-40. You're going to hear a million stories what it is. The, the one I hear a lot is War Department 40. Something about the War Department before World War II in 1940 invented. This was developed, I forget the name of the company, it's water displacement 40, as in the 40th shot at it. And what it was actually made for was, uh, it's one of the stainless steel rockets. Do you know which one it was? No. Atlas or something like that. Um, it was a, they called it a balloon uh, tank because the rocket skin was the tank. In fact, that rocket was so weak that if you took the fuel out of it, it would just collapse. It had to have the fuel in it to keep it alive. So you had this cryogenic fuel that stayed in there for a long time and it made it really cold and it would stay in the steel. And, and frost would build up and the frost weighed tons. So they, they wanted to get something that would displace water and, and make a, a, a slippery surface on the whole rocket so that when it took off, the shaking would have it all fall off and the thing could actually fly. And that, strange enough, was what it was developed for. But it's handy stuff. So that's what WD-40 is for and not for. And then this, this is Bow Shield. This isn't so much a lubricant, though it says it is. It, I mean, it is, but it's a wax. This is um, like a thicker version of this. You spray this on, when the solvent flashes off, you get left with this wax coating. And this is a lot better than you might think it is. Let's say I had a piece of steel and I painted it. And I took the other half and I sprayed bow shield on it, which is a light wax that I could scratch with a screwdriver. And I scratched both sides, and I came back two months later. Well, where I scratched the paint, I scratched the paint, and it's going to rust. Where I scratch the wax, the wax will flow back together because it's wax. So as long as it doesn't bother that it's kind of ooey to the touch, this is really great stuff to stop corrosion. Well, we're not going to touch the inside of this. And it also has other corrosion inhibitors and magic potions. So we're going to squirt a little bit on the corroded spots. And hopefully that'll keep further corrosion from happening. Okay, time to put it back together. Grease is still in good shape, so we'll leave that there. Put the brush holders onto the motor. Now, you got to push these springs back. There's always a trick. And on this one, the trick is you take the brush holder out, put it together, assemble the brush holder with the... Um, what is that called? The rotor. And uh, then put that all in the can. Sometimes you'll say there's no way to do this. Just no way. And if you see a motor, there's just no way to hold these little springs back and put it together. Look carefully. And on those motors, you'll find a little hole or two. What those are for is you put toothpicks in them. You pull the springs back. You shove a toothpick and it locks them back. You assemble the whole thing and then you pull the toothpicks out. So. Keep that in your pocket for a trick if you need it. Now you want to do this carefully because these are carbon and they're not super strong. And you can break these brushes. There we go. So now I've got the brushes on and you can see how they make contact when the thing spins around. And I'm going to put the brush in the engine end plate. 
put the bearing in, put a wire holder in. Get in there and line it up and put screws back in, which are here. This one has a lock washer on it. This one doesn't. And I'm gonna I'm gonna blame it on the last rebuilder because I don't think it came off with it. Now the brush holder is locked in, but the uh, rotor is not. So you've got to be careful because as you put this together, this, the magnets are going to suck that forward. So I'm going to put my finger here strongly. And I'm going to catch that so it can't go forward. And then I can put it together. And then I put this together. Now, you want to line up the magnets so that the, the holes for the long bolts line up the way they need to, so you can assemble that back together properly. And that also um, adjusts the timing for the rest of the motor. There's also a little pin here that kind of locks so you can't rotate it, and that means you got it <coughs> timed right. Now, oops, let me this. Okay, this turns much easier now. It was actually like, <coughs> now it, it spins around. It's still hard to turn because of the brushes. They're clamping it in there, but they need to much 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 easier okay I think we're good I'm not going to tear down the rest because it all looks good but if I did um, these planetary gears come right off uh, this whole assembly kind of comes back you'd want to take out the solenoid with these screws this thing comes off uh, this is a part that fails very often and the brush holder fails very often beyond that it's usually just a matter of cleaning it uh, there's a lever in here that pushes this, what's called a Bendix gear forward. But this all looks good, so I'm not gonna mess with this on Steve's. I'll put it back together, we're gonna give it a test. What I'm looking for is where the bolts go in and make sure I line them up with the bolt holes. Oops. And we've got this little bearing here. We don't wanna forget that. There's a nut there too. Oh, it goes on the outside, I think. Now, for the hardest part, the whole job is getting these started because you're fighting some magnets around it and you're trying to find at the end of this four inch bolt, the little nut that it goes into the threaded end. And I got it the first time. I think they might have actually um, kind of machined a little cone to get it started because that was just too easy. That can take like 20 minutes sometimes to get back together. If I get lucky on this one, I'm going to say they machined something. Yep, they that did. Yeah. That was too easy. I'm going to put this back together. Once I get it back together, we're going to test it. Then we're going to install it and always test because the installation is pain in the butt. And even though in this case, I don't have to do it. Conrad's going to do it. Don't want to make him have to do it twice. Even if it's a brand new starter or a newly rebuilt starter, test it before you install it because like let's say you install it and it doesn't work well now you don't know is the starter bad or is the engine seized up so at least you'll know that the starter was pretty good going together okay tight but not too tight you don't need to you know it's not holding anything together really okay I'll hook this wire back up Oh, then we take it all apart again. <laughs> I forgot a part. Conrad was being very nice about it. But... I know, I just noticed it because I was uh, thinking, oh yes, yeah. that's where that bolt goes. Uh, <laughs> that's where that nut goes. And we have a part left over. <laughs> yeah, that's a grease seal. Engine would run, motor would run without it. But I'm a professional. Yeah, little little tip here. You want to have no parts left. <laughs> 
<laughs> when you finish. I had some parts left over on a bit of do-it-yourself when I was very young and I had my first car. Did brake job and they were just the anti-school pads, you know, yeah. they don't really do anything and it was an old Volkswagen so things didn't really fit right with corrosion. Anyway, I got it all together, they wouldn't fit, so I left them out. My mom came out and looked, because the parts left, I go, Mom, making a car stop is easy, making it go is hard, we don't need all the parts for this. <laughs> Didn't set her mind at ease. I'll be amazed if that is a problem and it just starts up, it'd be great. It would be nice, we still probably have, huh? it, it should spin faster because of this, but we're probably gonna take remember the engine on the other side that when we started it yeah. two days ago it took some cranking first we probably yes. have to get some fuel where it needs to be somehow but I, I if it's spinning half speed I wasn't gonna and besides you saw inside this it needed to be fixed that corrosion would have yeah. just eaten it all up oh aren't we lucky what did I drop that no it's <laughs> sticking right yeah <laughs> I, well I should put grease on that yeah exactly when you were talking about wax and uh, uh -huh. oil and that sort of thing, it uh, brought to mind uh, as a blacksmith for many years, um, I used to use beeswax on the ironwork so that you could actually see the, the iron and the beeswax was wonderful at preventing rust. Um, and then if it was exterior, I'd add a little bit of linseed oil, um, heat it up uh, about up to 50% linseed oil uh, beeswax mix. Um, and then paint that on and a really? little bit of linseed oil well it used to be linseed oil uh, flaxseed oil is a self polymerizing oil it used to be all paints where that was the vehicle for for drying okay. the pigment you know the paint so um, it makes a little bit more of a paint like finish but the wax allows it to self mend like like I was talking about and I've recently been using a lot of um, lanolin Sheep grease, anhydrous lanolin, where the water's been removed from the grease, the natural water. What are they called? Anhydrous lanolin. Anhydrous. Yes. Okay. And um, I've all my rigging is galvanized steel rigging coated with lanolin. And uh, which one? Anhydrous lanolin. Yeah. And uh, and then it, it when it gets warm, it it definitely thins right out, um, uh, and covers and soaks into the wire, and then that and the old square riggers was wrapped in uh, cloth uh, with the lay of the wire and then the uh, you'd paint that with tar uh, pine tar as a waterproofing but breathable layer so if water gets in there it can it can get out and uh, and then you seize the whole thing uh, with marlin or all the string way up, the whole all the way up extremely tight on there against the lay of the wire so as the wire tries to undo it it does but it, it's still using the grease the, the, the grease of the lanolin and then you know the, the waxy pine tar to keep the water out that's a lot of line on those uh, stains and your rig smells like a wet sheep and, and pine tar that's how <laughs> I smell it <laughs> I haven't used my anhydrous lanolin in years. I should, it's good stuff. I just haven't I done try it. try to put it on my shackles. That's the main thing. The things that go, especially under the water, because it allows me to mm. come undone again. <laughs> on, the, on the threads. I use so fun grease. Yeah. I don't like that part. <laughs> Apparently I've got it in there wrong. Did you use up all your luck the first time? I time? did. Bearing's still there. I just think it doesn't go there. It goes a little different. Except it does. It goes right there. That's right. It's like this little rubber thing. I think it's what holds the uh, the plastic gear together. <laughs> it just it blows my mind that they would build that with a plastic gear. It probably is all it has to be is the second piece to fail, not the first piece. Okay, all the parts are in there now. You're such a perfectionist. You were so nice about it. <laughs> See, don't be nice about it. Call me on this because the, I, I the commenters, they're going to call me on this. <laughs> Ah!
That you want good and tight because that's an electrical connection. All right. There we are. You want to run the test? Run the test. Where are we getting power from? Okay. So we've got hot coming to where the hot goes to on the starter. And I've got ground going to where the engine goes. And I've got this wire coming from the hot. And I'll take this and touch it to this. In um, normal use of this, uh, a wire comes up, goes to your instruments. You have a key. And then the key or the push button starter energizes this little pin. And again, that makes the solenoid do its action, uh, engages this Bendix, pulls the solenoid's contactor against these two bolts, and power goes to the starter. So, got to hold on to these, have a lot of torque. That should go. And that, my friends, is what a starter should act like. And it sounded a lot better. We're going to try it again. We're going to try it again, except it back this together time it might be much yeah. rejoicing. I don't think it's going to start right up, though, because I think it's no, still it's a diesel a issue. Yeah. And everything else has been sitting for a while, too. I'll leave that wrench for you. Like the injectors. So, seeing as we've got this thing already tested, we'll just stick it in there. Make sure we're not pinching anything, any little wires like that. Oh, that's a... What's really cool is we only let Conrad out of this engine compartment about once a month. Yeah, no! He's still drenched. No. Okay, and we need a couple of bolts which have all moved. There's one started. And the other one. And. I knew a sum of There. It's on. All we need is power. So we got to hook the power up. <laughs> Ready? There you are. Sounds better. Okay, well, it's spinning twice as fast now. It's spinning yeah, fast enough to start the engine. But this engine, now we can work on the fuel problem. But that's another thing. <laughs> well, that's the starter working. Now we got to get the engine working, but that's a different video. Um, <laughs> poor Steve. The next one. But the point is, now it's spinning fast enough that the engine has hope of starting. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, all the normal things, please give us a thumbs up if you've come this far. That helps uh, others know it's a worthy video to see. And uh, there'll be stuff down below for all kinds of links, like a starter, things like that. Stuff you might want in your kit going offshore. Good day.